Hi there, Lindsay here. It's day 20 of Inktober and Sketchbook Sunday, and today I'm going to show you a time lapse of how I created today's drawing. As you know, Inktober is a month long challenge. Um, a lot of people do it online. Um, generally, you create a piece of artwork for the daily prompt every day using at least in part ink, um, and you can follow their prompt or do your own thing, or there's alternate prompts. I'm using the, pr the prompts that they provide, but also making every day a drawing of hands. So I've wanted to get better at hand drawing and um, or drawing hands I should say and so that's what I challenged myself to do and um, I've really been enjoying the pieces that I've come up with. It's been difficult to squeeze them in every day but um, it's day 20 and I'm still hanging in there so if you're doing Inktober let me know in the comments below so we can cheer each other on. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot of work but um, it's so nice to you know see something through to the end. Hopefully I can make it the next 11 days and have a drawing done each day. Um, I'm sketching here with a call erase pencil. Oh, and by the way, if you want a real time tutorial of this, I do have, or I will tomorrow in Critique Club, I will have a um, have the real time version uploaded there with instruction all narrated. So you can have that if that's something you're interested in. I will link it down below. Critique Club is a monthly membership club that I offer in my teachable school. So I drew this with a terracotta call erase pencil and um, I'm using a reference photo from Unsplash which is a uh, royalty free commercial use photo site and um, I'm just looking at the reference on my computer and sketching it in. Call erase pencils are erasable so if you're worried about drawing in colored pencil um, this is a nice solution because it just gives you something different than just plain graphite and also I wasn't sure if I was going to use watercolor or water-based inks or um, alcohol markers on this so by using the oh that was yesterday's by the way I'll put all the this week's sketches on my blog if you want to go check them out um, so you don't have to worry about what you're gonna go over it for a medium sometimes a graphite pencil will smudge and these don't smudge so it's really nice for whatever you want to do on top and sometimes just doing your drawing in a different color gives your brain a new perspective and makes it easier um, sometimes drawing upside down too I've done that I did that yesterday where I got really messed up in my drawing I drew it, I flipped it upside down and flipped my photo on my computer upside down so I could draw it uh, differently. Hands though you see in every different direction so it's a little hard to erase your brain from looking at it and knowing it's a hand like sometimes when you draw other things upside down it's a little easier but it definitely gives you a new perspective. What I'm doing here is using a number two micron pen. This is one of the Art and Fly micron pens and I am just going over the lines that are good. Now I will alter here at this stage. So if I've got a line I see is a little bit off um, or I want to change it a little bit, I'll go ahead and just draw the pen line where I want it because I can just go in and erase over the pencil lines if I need to or by the time I start layering inks and paints it's really not going to be that noticeable. So don't be afraid to alter as you're doing your pen work if you notice that something is not quite right. You can also um, fix it with a pencil and then line over it. I Do what you're comfortable with, but I'll tell you what, the more you draw, the more you're going to be much more comfortable just jumping right in there with the pen. And um, you could even go right in with a pen right off the start. You don't need to do a pencil drawing underneath if you don't want to. I'm still, um, I'm still learning with the hands. I'm still working on uh, the structure and uh, having that pencil line really makes it a lot easier. Even though I didn't have to go in really and erase much, it still is a little bit more comfortable to draw with that pencil first if I have the option. I mean sometimes I'm just drawing all I have is a pen and I'll just go right in and everything's fine, but um, that I like to go in with that colored pencil first. It's just how I like to work. You can do it how you like to do. I liked that this picture, the reference photo I had, and I cropped in. It was a person putting, like, tying their shoes. I cropped into the feet and the hands, um, which is a nice thing about using your computer as a drawing tool. You crop right into what you want. You can brighten things up using editing software. If it doesn't appear clear enough for you, you can grab a couple different images and use them together to make your own new image. Uh, it's just a really wonderful tool 
um, as long as you don't get distracted by all the other things that are on your computer, like social media and all that stuff, at least not when you're meaning to draw. I'm doing a little cross hatching on some of the shadows here on the sole of the shoe because again, the, the prompt was tread. So I wanted to get the sole of a shoe. I didn't know how I was gonna incorporate that with hands, but um, I just uh, looked for pictures of people tying shoes. So I just Googled tying a shoe in uh, the Unsplash search engine there or search bar. And uh, this was one of the options that came up and I went for it. I liked how the hands were touching each other and how there was a, the string, the shoelace wrapped around the finger. I thought it was very interesting. And even though it doesn't look like the way I tie shoes, um, it's not something that you really slow down and observe that much, especially if you're looking at someone tying shoes, it's usually you tying your own shoes and it's a completely different perspective. So I get a kick out of things like that that are just kind of ordinary, but something you don't really pay attention to. I decided I would base in my drawing with the uh, with watercolors and I'm using the Jane Davenport neutrals palette or skin tone palette. I can't remember what she calls it, but I think you can find that still at most Michael stores uh, or Amazon. I'll link it to Amazon in the video description anyway. It's inexpensive and I did add a pan of alizarin crimson in the center uh, stripe space there. And the thing I like about this palette, it's very similar to the Prima palettes in the fact that you've got room in the center to put six or seven half, more half pans of color if you want to flesh that out. But um, I forgot how much I enjoyed this little palette and it's been really nice. I've used it on a couple of the Inktober sketches because it's just a really nice way to base in the skin tones. Now I recommend that you jump right in and go try to get your values right in when you're on that first layer. That's why I wet it for first so that I could just go in and throw in the color and let them blend together and merge. And the paper that I'm working on, I just, uh, I didn't start a new sketchbook, but I finished up a couple sketchbooks that I had going and I grabbed this one I had started earlier this year that only had like a couple pages done in it. This is an Arteza watercolor sketchbook and I really like it. Now the paper is a little on the thin side and this being a nine by 12 sketchbook does want to warp a little bit, but it's not too bad and it's kind of par for the course. I'd say this is about 90 pound, maybe 200 gram weight paper. And um, the side I'm working on for this drawing is the hot press side. You'll notice as you flip through that you'll have some, some spreads will have two cold press pages, some spreads will have two hot press pages, and then sometimes you'll get a hot press and a cold press. I think it's because the book was made with, um, with double-sided paper that has a smooth and a rough side. And then the way it was stitched together, you just sometimes get different combinations of papers. At least that's that's uh, how I observed it to be. Maybe you have a different experience with yours, but I do like the sketchbook from Arteza and it's quite affordable. Um, it has a pretty linen cover and um, it comes in three different sizes. So if you don't want something this big, there are, are other options. And the paper in it reminds me of both the Fabriano Venice book and also the Stillman and Byrne beta series mixed media paper. If you're familiar with those, just to give you a point of reference, if you've never used these before. I like to put some kind of like rosy pinky colors in like the skin, especially in the shadows, in the edges of the skin, where you might have that translucency where light can kind of shine through um, because your skin is kind of translucent. It's not completely opaque. So I like to get those rosy edges so it kind of looks like you know you've got flesh and blood under the skin. It's a warm feeling and I feel like it's a very um, human and uh, it's just I feel like that particular quality draws the human connection into a portrait or a figure drawing. So I like to put that in there. I also feel like it's red is a very noticeable color like it can kind of pull the viewer into the action of the painting so it's nice it's nice to add those reds at points of contact like where the hands are touching each other it just kind of um it's almost like a bullseye it draws your attention in and it's subtle but it is very effective it's also nice you can also use uh, pinks around the eyes when you're doing a portrait and it can really draw the viewer into the eyes and offer a contrast from the eye color, especially if it's like a really pale, like a light blue or green um, or gray eye. It can just just bring a little interest in there. It's it's kind of just lively looking, I think. It looks like it's full of life. And I'm glazing on some more shadows here. Um, I'm not being too precious with anything. I'm really being loose with the coloring. I want this to feel like action is happening uh, instead of just like a, a static shot. Um, and I, that's what I've noticed a lot that I've been enjoying doing in these Inktober sketches is that when I have something that is move, moving, I like to add that action, like with yesterday's uh, sketch and, and this sketch here. Anytime where there's movement, I like to 
be really loose with the approach and try to bring some of that action in. I'm mixing my colors for the most part, even though there's a lot of convenience colors in this palette, I still like to mix. Now here, um, I wasn't sure about the background, but I, especially in a sketchbook, if I'm not sure about something, I tend to just try it anyway, just to see, because it's low stakes, it's a sketchbook, nobody else has to see it. Uh, if it's real awful, I don't have to post it. Nothing's been that terrible, although pretty much every drawing I've done for Inktober, there's been one point, like early on in the sketch, I plan on just scrapping it. Ironically, not in this one. This one, I, I, I had a pretty straight path on this one, which was nice, although I regretted this background for quite a while um, because what I felt happened when I put this background in is that I lost contrast. I also want to have a little bit of a spatteriness in the background. Again, I wanted that for creating the action and I was regretting this pretty hard too. To be completely honest, I was like, oh no, what did I do? I liked it so much up until this point. But I find that if I get into a situation like this, the best thing I can do is take a break. So um, if you're, you know, working on your sketches, especially if you don't have a big block of time, work for 10 minutes, do your sketch, take a break, come back, ink it, take a break, come back, add color if you want to add color. You may decide you don't want color, take a break. And this, it'll just help you see your artwork more clearly and not jump to correct something that's really not a problem. So to bring the contrast back, what I ended up doing was using some acrylic paint pens. So these pens have acrylic ink in them. It's like a thin down acrylic paint. And and um, I'm going in with this white and just adding my highlights and smudging them with my fingers so I don't have anything too bright. The lighting was really strong in the photograph that I used, so I really wanted to capitalize on that. And um, I think that's why I wanted the background because it was so dark in the background and I didn't want a foot just hovering in the middle of the air. I wanted to kind of you have the impression that somebody is sitting in the shadows tying their shoes. Um, you know, it looks like it might have been before a wedding. Maybe they're, you know, uh, maybe in the, the back room in the church tying their shoes, getting ready to go out onto the um, uh, pulpit area with their groomsmen and, you know, get the show on the road. So I wanted just to, to kind of be kind of mysterious and dark. And the, it also, that background gave me the option of having those nice bright highlights and gave me the option of that contrast, which I think worked pretty well. Uh, when all was said and done. But I'm telling you, man, when I first put that in there, I was like, oh no, what have I done? But it's like, it's way too late for me to uh, try another Inktober drawing today. So here I am doing that same thing with the pink again, except I'm putting the pink in more of the points of contact, the fingertips, um, and just trying to, and I blotted some off because I'm like, oh yeah, I want that really concentrated in the fingers so it would draw the viewer's attention in there. Warm colors draw you in, and then that's going to help that darker, cooler background recede as well. So it's a little trick there, but I thought it was pretty, um, pretty effective, and uh, then I was regretting the background less. I find that I like contrast a lot. I like to have rich shadows, like to have bright highlights, and um, I you know, I really was happy once I started to add more of those darks in there. And then you can see that I'm starting to break the hands away from the background again. So all is well, all is well that ends well. And if you don't try those risky uh, things in your art, you're, you're not going to know. You're, you know, you're going to, when you stay safe, you don't grow and then you get burnt out and um, you don't want to get burnt out. You want to stay fresh in your art, even if it means ruining a painting. It's better off to ruin a painting once in a while because you tried something that it is to do everything and make it pretty, but never learn and grow because you're not going to enjoy your art very long if you do that. Um, and now at this point I'm just kind of refining here and there. I don't like to do too many glazes if I've done really big washes like on the feet, on the shoes, because you get that really nice texture, especially with colors like ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, any of those mineral colors, because they kind of separate and float on the surface and give you a beautiful texture. And I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to ruin that. So I decided I would call it quits on the watercolor and go over to some details in colored pencil. Uh, I'm using my favorite colored pencils because I like to do mixed media and layer. I choose Prismacolors usually. I find Prismacolors and the Derwent Color Soft to be really good at that because they're more opaque and they stand up on top of your layers of ink and watercolor. And they're so soft, they stick to all those layers. They don't find them skipping even over that acrylic paint. They still want to stick on top of that. Whereas if you're using um, 
um, an oil-based pencil um, or a harder wax pencil, they'll want to skip over that and not lay down any pigment. Um, so, you know, it just depends on what you like to do, the pencils that you're going to prefer. Don't take my word for it if you don't like to work the way I do. If you like to work on white paper and keep it, you know, just colored pencils and build up layers, you're probably not going to enjoy those pencils. You'll probably prefer Polychromos or Arteza or something that's a little bit harder, uh, a little bit um, more transparent. So, you know, it's, it's great if you can just get a couple pencils of you know, a brand before you decide to jump in and buy a big set. Generally, pencils are cheaper in a set, so it's nice to buy a big set. But if you're not sure if you're going to like it, just, you know, purchase a couple pencils open stock of colors you know you're going to use a lot and um, then determine how you like them before you invest in a big set. And then you can go whole hog and get a big set and save, get the most bang for your buck. So I'm going over and relining some of my lines with an O3, I believe. And that's just giving me a little bit more uh, crispness and definition where I've lost it because I've added some opaque media such as the paint pens. Now I'm using a, a Jelly Roll um, white gel pen. And the reason I'm using this one, I got a pack, a multi-pack at um, one of the big box stores and there were three different sizes and I thought I'd give it a try and it works just fine. So, uh, so there you have it. <laughs> and just a few more shadows with colored pencil and there you have it. I'm happy with the way this came out. If you want to see this in real time, check out Critique Club. I'll link it down below along with the supplies I used. Thank you so much for joining me on this Inktober Sketchbook Sunday. Until next time, happy crafting.